It's common to need the same data in different places. One file for raw inputs, another for reports and dashboards, or even subsets of the data in the same file filtered for specific criteria. But updating everything manually is slow, risky and completely avoidable. In this video, I'll show you five ways to sync your data across sheets and workbooks automatically and when to use each one. And don't forget that you can always download the practice file from the description or pinned comment. We'll start with the simplest method, which also has some downsides, but let's look at it because I know this is a common approach. For example, let's say I want to reuse this list of product names and total revenue figures on another sheet in the same file. One way is to use formulas to simply reference the relevant cells. So type in an equal sign where you want the values returned to, navigate to the sheet containing them, left click on the first cell. And you can see Excel enters the sheet name surrounded in apostrophes, which you get when there's a space in the sheet name. Then it's followed by an exclamation mark. And finally, the cell reference. All I need to do is press enter and I can copy that down as many rows as I need. And now I have the list of products. Another way we can generate those links is by copying the cells we want, control C to copy, and then navigate back to where you want them. And then on the home tab, paste, and at the bottom, paste link. And if you look in the formula bar, you can see this also returns formulas linked to cells. Now referencing external files is similar. I'm going to go to the view tab. And we're just going to arrange them in a vertical format so we can see them side by side. So this is the external file on the right. And I'm just going to expand here. And in this cell, we're going to generate the links to the external file. So again, equals. Left click once on the external file to enable it. Then select the cell that you want to reference. Notice the link here includes the file name wrapped in square brackets. Then the sheet name followed by an exclamation mark. And then we have the cell reference. But here it has dollar signs. That is, it's absolute or locked unlike when you're linking internally. Now we can press the F4 key three times to get rid of those dollar signs, or you can just delete them with the backspace key. I'll press enter. And just like before, I can copy it down to get my list of products. And like before, I can also copy the cells and then paste them in as links. However, if I close this external file and we force a recalc in here, so F2 to edit the cell, press enter, you'll notice the formulas now include the full file path. While linking cells like this works, it's not without problems. I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to just tile them side by side so that I can navigate to the annual revenue sheet on the right. And on the left, we can see the links to that sheet because I want to demonstrate what happens if, for example, I have no product in this cell. Over here, we get a zero, which is kind of annoying. One way to get around that is to concatenate with the ampersand a blank. So two double quotes. And then if I copy that formula down, we don't see the zero anymore. And that's because concatenating a blank on the end forces this format to be text and zeros don't display for text. However, you wouldn't want to use that technique for numbers. So let's control Z to undo that. And instead we can apply a custom number format. So control one to open the format cells dialog box and then custom. And then here, say I want a format with comma separator and no decimal places. The first format is for positive values. The second is for negative. Then I can add another semicolon and the next format is for zeros. And I can simply leave that blank. Click OK. And now it gets rid of zeros for my product. And if we get rid of the total revenue here, it also doesn't display a zero here. Now, if your source data changes shape, for example, you insert a row, let's insert a row here, you'll notice that the links here don't break. But if I add a product in here, we'll put in alpha, I notice on the left, it doesn't automatically pick it up. Likewise, if I added a product to the bottom, it also doesn't include it. So now we're left with manually maintaining these links to always adapt as our source data changes, which is a pain. However, let's delete that because if you have Excel for Microsoft 365, you can use the new trim ref dot operator. So what I could do there is select a number of cells, including some below the current data set to allow for more values to be added. And then after the colon, I can type in a dot, which is the new trim ref dot operator. And what that will do is it'll automatically return all the data in my range while omitting any trailing empty rows. 
press enter and you can see it spills the results. And now if I type in an item here, it automatically picks it up. And if I type in a new item at the bottom, what's the next one, gamma, you can see it's also automatically included here. And this works for numeric values as well. So we can go right down as far as we need, type in a dot after the colon, and we get our spilled array of values. And while the trimref dot operator also works on external files, these external file links are unreliable and easily broken. For example, down here, I have some sum if formulas, and you can see they're referencing an external file that's currently closed, and they return the value error. So you end up having to open a load of files just to update your reports. Plus, if the file that you're referencing is renamed or it gets moved to a different folder, the references break. So you can see that while formulas like this work, they're error prone. So they're best used for quick, low risk internal links in small files. Next, let's look at some other options. Plus, I'll show you a better way to work with data in external files later in the video. If you format your data in an Excel table, which you can do using the keyboard shortcut Control T, my table has headers, so I'll leave that checked and click OK. And then on the Table Design tab, I can give this table a more useful name, like Revenue Data. Then you can simply reference whole columns using the table structured reference. Place your cursor above the column header until it turns into the down arrow, like you can see here and left click once to select the column excluding the headers. Press enter and it spills the results. Now this spill effect is available in Excel 2021 onward and with Microsoft 365. Likewise, we can do that for the revenue column and press enter and that job's done. You can also return the whole table equals, place your mouse in the top left until it turns into the diagonal arrow, left click once just to pick up the rows, left click again to include the headers, press enter and you get the whole table repeated. And obviously you can put this on another sheet. Now the nice thing about referencing tables is any changes to the tables are automatically reflected in the linked cells. So for example, I could change this to Delta and you can see it feeds through there and there, or I can add a new product and the table range automatically fills down and it feeds through wherever it's being referenced. This works because any new rows added to the next available row below the table are automatically included in the table range. So use tables when you want dynamic ranges and better formula readability, and you don't have access to the new trimref.operator. By the way, if working with functions feels intimidating, I've got a course on advanced Excel formulas that breaks them down with real examples and practice files, plus support and mentoring from me personally, so you can master them once and for all. You'll find the link in the description and pinned comment. So far, we've looked at getting all rows from the data set, but what if you only want rows that meet specific criteria? This is where the filter function can be super handy. Here I have a table of sales data by year, category and product. And let's say I just want to extract the current year's data. With the filter function, I can reference the whole table. Remember, place your mouse in the top left, left click once to select the table, comma, in the include argument, I want to include where the year equals 2025. Close parentheses, press enter, and now I just have an extract of 2025's data by category, product, and the sales values. And it's tied to the original data. So if I change components here to accessories, you can see it feeds through automatically. And I can do other cool things like sort this data based on the second column, close parentheses, and now my data is sorted by category. Use filter when you want to extract specific rows or columns and want instant updates to flow through. By the way, the filter function can also handle multiple criteria and return specific columns in any order. So check out this comprehensive video on filter for more. So far, the solutions have used formulas to extract data, but as we've seen, formulas are easily broken. So let's look at some more robust ways to extract data. And one of my favorites, are pivot tables. Most people think pivot tables are for summarizing data, and they are, but they can also extract all records. And assuming you have no duplicates, which you shouldn't, you can display each line in your data set, plus easily filter and arrange the data to suit your needs. For example, I can insert a pivot table that extracts this data. And while this is in the same file, it can also be an external file if you prefer and that can help you keep your file size small. So on the insert tab of the ribbon, I'm going to insert a pivot table 
my table range is this table here. I'm going to pop it on the existing worksheet in the cell selected. Click OK. Let's left click and drag to bring the field list over closer. All I need to do here is include all the attribute columns in the row labels and then any value columns in the value fields. So that would be sales. Now I have all my data, but the format's not quite right. Go up to the design tab. You want your report layout to be in a tabular form. Now mine is, but select it from the list. And I want to repeat all item labels. So now I have my data here in a pivot table. But now that it's in a pivot table, I can do cool things like use the filter buttons to filter, for example, for a specific year. Or I could do things like right click and add a slicer. And now I have a slicer that makes it really quick and easy to filter for a specific category. And the super cool thing about pivot tables is now you can set them up to auto refresh. On the pivot table analyze tab, we've got auto refresh. Just click it once to enable it. Now this feature is currently rolling out to users in the Microsoft 365 Excel beta channel. So you may not see it yet. But with auto refresh enabled, if I change the value here, you'll notice it will automatically update in the pivot table. So keep an eye on this row. I'm going to change this to 15,000. And just like that, it's updated in my pivot table. Pretty cool. Use pivot tables when you want a stable, filterable view of your data. They're great for dashboards and reports. And while auto refresh is very cool, it only works for pivot tables connected to local tables or ranges in the same workbook, not Power Query or external sources. Speaking of Power Query, let's look at that next. If you're extracting or referencing data in external files, I recommend you use Power Query to get it. It's more robust than formulas, and you can set the query to auto refresh on opening the workbook and at set intervals. Let's take a look. In this file, I have a sheet called financials. The data is not formatted in an Excel table, although that would work too. I'm going to close this file and then in my other file, I'm going to go to the data tab, get data from file. It's in an Excel workbook, but you can choose whichever source your data is in. All I need to do is select the file, import. My data is on the financial sheet. We can see a preview of it on the right, so I can confirm it's correct. Now from here, I can load it or I can click on transform data and open the Power Query editor and do some further cleaning and filtering. For example, I might only want to bring in data for USA, so let's filter out everything except for USA. And if I scroll across to the right, you can see the manager field is included. There's only one manager, so that column's redundant. Let's press the delete key to delete that. Now this doesn't affect the source data. This is just reducing the data that I'm going to bring into my file. Of course, if there are further cleaning tasks like splitting columns or summarizing the data by segment, etc., you can do that here before loading the data into your file. I'm ready to close and load. So on the Home tab, Close and Load, and I want Close and Load too. Here I can load it to a table in the current file or straight to a pivot table report, pivot chart, or if I want to load it to the data model, I choose Only Create Connection and check the Add this data to the data model box. I'm going to load it straight to a pivot table report and I'm going to put it on the existing worksheet. Click OK. There's my field list. Let's bring it over closer. Now, if I want to see all the rows in the data, simply add all the text fields to the row labels and then any numeric fields go in the values area. So that includes sale price, gross sales, discounts, sales, cost of goods, profit, and we want date also in the row labels. Alternatively, you could pick and choose what columns you want to work with and have it summarize it automatically. Now what pivot tables do is they automatically group your dates into years, quarters and months. If you don't want them grouped, you can control Z as soon as it does the grouping. And now I just have my date field as per my data set. And remember on the design tab, we want the report layout in tabular and we want to repeat all item labels. And now we have a mirror of our data in that external file. Of course, this assumes there are no duplicates in that external file, which there shouldn't be. Alternatively, if I just want some headline figures, for example, total sales by segment, then I could remove all the columns that don't serve that purpose. And now I have total sales by segment 
Let's right click and change the number format to number with comma separator and no decimals. And because it's in a pivot table, we can easily sort it from largest to smallest, etc. Now, if you want the data to automatically update, go to the data tab, open the queries and connections pane. It appears on the right, right click the query and go into the properties. And then on the usage tab, you can choose to refresh up to every minute. And you probably want to refresh the data when opening the file. Click OK. And now your data in this query and pivot table are going to update every minute. I recommend you use Power Query to bring data in from external files rather than using formulas. It's more robust and doesn't require the source file to be open to get updates. We've only just scratched the surface of what Power Query can do. If you're already pulling data from other sheets or files, the next step is to automate the cleanup, merging and formatting so you never have to repeat the same steps again. In this video, I show you how to automate boring Excel tasks with Power Query. No coding, no VBA, just point and click. I'll see you there.